Hi, and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. In this section, we're really going to start dealing with what most people consider the core of chemistry. We've spent the last several sections building a really important foundation, uh, learning about the elements, learning about the periodic table, learning about how all of that is organized. We've covered elements and isotopes and how the atom is constructed. And we've been talking constantly over and over that chemistry is all about these elements coming together and making new materials. That you can take hydrogen, which is a gas, you know, and it's flammable. And you can take oxygen, which is prevalent in our atmosphere. And you can bring them together and form a compound, H2O, water, which doesn't look anything like hydrogen by itself or oxygen by itself, has properties completely differently. And can you imagine Earth without water? I mean, water is two-thirds of the whole planet. So the fact that we have all these elements on the periodic table that can combine in different ratios and different amounts and just so many different uh, combination, it boggles the mind as to how many different chemical compounds probably exist in the universe. So we're going to start this journey by looking at how these things combine. Uh, taking two elements and joining them together. So we have to crawl before we can walk and so what we're going to do is learn about how to take two elements, just two elements off the periodic table and join them and learn how to name them. And specifically we're going to learn how to name what we call the molecular compounds. So here's when we get into chemistry and we get into sort of a potpourri of, of definitions. So if you don't understand the difference between a molecular compound and an ionic compound, and an organic compound and an inorganic compound, then uh, if you just gloss over that, you're going to do yourself a disservice because things will be more complicated than they really are. So let me start out by giving you a general overview of what those definitions mean, and then we in this section are going to zoom in on molecular compounds and how to name molecular compounds. In sections to follow, we'll learn how to name different types of compounds. So let's look at the big picture. This is this is sort of everything in nature up here at the top. So we have sort of a pyramid. So we have everything in nature. So I told you it was going to be the big picture. And it is the big picture because this is everything that exists, right? All, in other words, all chemical compounds that are possible. All right, so underneath this guy, there's two broad classes, right? Two broad classes. Um, the first one over here on the right, I'm just going to call it like this. I'm going to call these, well, this is what they're called in your book, organic compounds. Organic compounds, right? Organic compounds. So I'm going to go ahead and underline this. It's very important. So what are organic compounds in general? What are the top bullet points as to what an organic compound is? Basically, the thing that differentiates an organic compound from everything else in the universe is that it contains carbon. So that's the most important thing. So it contains Carbon. Now most of us think of organic, you know, in a typical sense. You think of something at the grocery store being organic. It means it's not sprayed with pesticides. It means that it's pure. It means that it's beautiful. It's healthier. Well, the definition in chemistry really has nothing to do with, with growing vegetables out in, in the field and what they do to them. That's, that's something that came along later. The real definition of organic simply means, does your compound have carbon in it? Why do you say, uh, why should you say uh, carbon is so important? Well, it's beyond the scope of where we are now in chemistry, but suffice to say, carbon is a very special element. It can bond with things in, a, in sort of a special way, and it lets, it basically facilitates the, the construction of very complicated molecules um, because of the way carbon can bond with other things. So, that's why we're all made up of carbon, because when you look at really what you're made of, the proteins, uh, the DNA, the very long stretches of thousands of molecules in your, of DNA in your body, those very long chains, um, carbon is what makes them possible. So the complicated life uh, requires complicated molecules. Think of everything in your cells going on. The, uh, the DNA and the RNA and all of the, uh, the cell membrane letting things in and letting things out and processing materials and taking fats and converting the energy and all of these things is just incredibly complicated. It requires complicated molecules to pull all those functions off and carbon is what our entire ecosystem as far as life is built upon because carbon allows these complicated chains to form. That's a simplified definition but it's basically the bottom line. So when we talk about organic compounds, it basically means does 